Thank you for inviting me um, to explain the German energy vendor. Uh, it is something that you can understand only if you know a little bit more about our mentality and our domestic debate. But it is something that you can explain easily to everybody uh, uh, around uh, the world. In order to understand it, why did we take such a far-going decision? Well, there was no other issue that has divided Germany more as the issue of uh, nuclear power plants. I cannot see in any other country, not in the UK, not in France, not in Italy, uh, not in the US, certainly not in China or in the Czech Republic, a similar debate that has, uh, that has uh, hijacked the political debate in Germany for more than 30 years. The Green Party was founded as a, as a result of this debate and the resistance against the use of uh, nuclear energy has uh, spread around the country for more than 30 years and after the Fukushima incident, there was no longer any chance of public acceptance for the use of nuclear energy. So whether it was right or wrong, uh, that's not the matter. The matter is, and the question is, you cannot, on the long run, implement an energy policy that has no backing by 75% of the people in your country. And therefore, we had to come to an end of the debate, and what we have decided is to uh, <coughs> close down all our nuclear power plants by 2022. Uh, we have closed down already eight of them. We are still a electricity exporting country. The uh, supply uh, situation still is rather stable compared to countries uh, uh, where nuclear energy is no problem, like the US. Um, and um, we have to, uh, and we have of course to replace all these nuclear power plants uh, by different uh, sources of electricity production. This is not a big challenge because when you compare uh, France, where the share of nuclear electricity today is 75%, when you compare that with Germany, with the share of only 25% of nuclear energy, then you can see that it's an easy task just to replace uh, some uh, 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 nuclear power plants uh, by some, let's say, fossil fueled uh, power plants. But that was, from the beginning on, never the ambition. The ambition was to um, implement what we call in the meantime energy vendor, energy transition, uh, energy turnaround. There is no correct English translation for that. Uh, but it means and implies the entire revolution of the um, energy supply sector within a period of uh, 30 to 40 years. And this is uh, something that is um, quite uh, demanding because Germany is one of the uh, most successful and competitive uh, European uh, countries uh, worldwide. Uh, and uh, we have struggled very hard to restore that degree of competitiveness that we have today. So we have to be very cautious in approach and uh, very conscious that everything we are doing could have an immediate effect on the competitivity of our uh, economy and our business sector. And this is why it is so extremely important to have a public debate on the, um, on the uh, aims and the targets of this um, energy wind. Well, we are the first industrialized country of this size that has decided um, to um, base its almost entire energy supply on uh, renewable energies. The, uh, according to, um, to schedule, we would have 80% uh, of renewable energy supply by 2050. Uh, that means um, we, have, um, uh, we are now, um, uh, we have now, uh, uh, by the end of last year, uh, we had 23% uh, of electricity from renewable sources. That's for a small portion of water, uh, but then uh, to a very large extent wind, uh, e electricity from biomass, and electricity from solar panels. 
And all of them combined 23% this year, probably 26% at the end of the year, more than 35%, probably more than 40% by the year uh, 2020. And um, then until 2050, a share of uh, 80%. That's quite a challenge because it means a complete and entire revolution uh, of our supply system. In previous years, uh, the um, supply was organized in a way that the power plants were located in areas where there was an enormous demand for electricity. So in the Ruhrgebiet, uh, in Bavaria, uh, in the Rhine area, uh, you have lots of power plants. So, and that meant that the grid was not very extended. It was a very highly developed uh, grid, but uh, in a regional dimension uh, in the first place. And now we see renewable energies implemented everywhere in Germany. And that means we have to completely reorganize our grid uh, infrastructure, for example. Many other challenges as well. And uh, why did we do it? Well, there is one simple reason. And this reason is called sustainability. Sustainability probably is the biggest challenge for our generation. We are today living in a fast growing world of almost 8 billion people. Um, the problem is not the number of people, but the economic growth that is uh, coming from all these people, especially in Asia. Uh, an economy like China uh, is doubling uh, every 10 years, quadrupling every 20 years, and at the same time, the energy and electricity demand is doubling and quadrupling. And China, for example, is in, a, is in big trouble. How to provide enough electricity for all these people with rapidly growing uh, energy demand? They are constructing new uh, coal-fired power plants, one every week, more than 50 every year. They are constructing new nuclear power plants, uh, and still they cannot satisfy uh, the growing demand for energy. And when we look at the entire uh, world scale, then uh, you can imagine what it would mean if we would base the growing demand for electricity and energy for a world of 8 billion people, growing world of 8 billion people, almost entirely on nuclear energy and fossil energy. It would mean that we would release much more CO2 into the atmosphere than we have done over the last uh, 100 years. Uh, it is rapidly increasing. Uh, and I'm, you know, I'm not a religious believer in climate change. Well, there is climate change, that, that there is no doubt. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm not a religious believer that it is made by mankind. People, many, many researchers say it is made by mankind. Others say, well, we doubt. But I mean, um, when we know in 30 years from now, then it's probably too late to change it. So that means we have to act now if we want to preserve a good environment uh, for our children and grandchildren, then we have to act now. And that means we have uh, not to reduce, but we have to stabilize the consumption of fossil energies. Uh, even, if we, even if we would reduce the share of fossil energies with regard to the entire energy consumption, we would probably still see an increase of the absolute uh, numbers of tons of coal and oil and gas uh, that will be used to satisfy that demand. And therefore, we cannot we cannot oblige countries like China, India, Indonesia uh, to, um, uh, to, to, to reduce economic growth in order to protect the environment. They always will choose in favor of economic growth uh, because they want to have washing machines, uh, TV, um, air conditioning, cars, uh, everything that we have for so many years already. And the only way of solving that uh, deadly race for energy is to provide uh, patterns and models that would allow us to combine economic growth with the needs of a sound uh, environment. That's the challenge. 
And this cannot be done by countries in East uh, Asia uh, or Africa. It can be done only by the developed countries in Europe, in the US, where we have the technological skills to develop um, new approaches and new systems. It's also in the technological interest of Europe. Uh, Germany, as one of the highly reputed countries with regard to engineers, patents, etc., Germany has missed the um, uh, revolution uh, in the um, uh, entertainment industry in the 70s that came from Japan uh, and Korea. Um, we have always missed uh, the um, revolution, the digital revolution that came from Silicon Valley. So we have missed a lot of a number of basic innovations over the last uh, uh, decennia. And now <laughs> our presumption is that we are the eve of a deep going revolution in the field of energy supply. It has more or less a similar uh, a decree than the revolution in the field of uh, and the digital revolution of the internet. And therefore, if Europe could manage not only to teach others and to provide models and patents uh, for energy supply, but if we could manage to be the first in this um, energy revolution, it would guarantee us a competitive advantage with the other regions uh, in the world that would last many, many years and help us a lot to economically survive in a globalized world. This is the, the reason why we believe it's not just for the environment, but it's also for our economy, a good thing to develop uh, new solutions in the field of energy supply. And this is um, what we have to do over the next couple of years. We have to encourage a wave of innovation that would cover everything from the production uh, and the distribution of energy to the issue of energy efficiency, to the design of the products, to methods of uh, production. It would cover almost the entire economic uh, activities of a country like Germany. And this is why I, in one of my first uh, speeches uh, when I was appointed minister, have said, well, it is the biggest challenge for Germany since the reconstruction after the war and uh, unification uh, uh, after the fall of the Iron Curtain. I cannot see any other technological economic challenge of such an importance uh, for the country. So what do we have uh, to do? We have, for the first time, for the first uh, uh, challenge, of course, is to have a uh, energy production that is uh, based increasingly on renewable energies. Yes, that is something that we have successfully achieved by providing a very generous feed-in uh, tariff scheme. Uh, when you uh, buy a windmill or when you have your pan solar panels on your roof, you are entitled uh, to feed-in tariffs for 20 years, uh, fix uh, uh, feed-in tariffs. That was very important in the, over the last 10 years because you could earn perhaps uh, 1% uh, uh, interest when, uh, with a traditional uh, financial instrument, but you could earn easily 6 to 15 percent by investing into renewable energy. So that meant that um, the, um, the capital, the international capital and investment uh, moving around desperately looking for a safe harbor uh, was able to say, well, we have a safe harbor, we can earn a lot of money, and at the same time, do something uh, positive uh, in favor of the environment. That's a extremely attractive uh, combination. Uh, so we have, um, we have really uh, initiated a wave of investment in this field. For example, when you look at our solar panels, over the last, uh, we have a feed-in tariff system uh, since the year 2000, but uh, two-thirds of the capacities in Germany have been implemented within the last three years. Uh, it was uh, an enormous boom, uh, like the housing boom in other countries and uh, uh, different booms. I'm always very, very suspicious when I'm talking about booms, 
because my experience uh, is that a boom will last uh, longer or shorter, but it comes, it comes to an end uh, one day, and then you have collateral damages. But today, we have in Germany 32,000 uh, megawatt solar panels, and that means uh, in a sunny day, um, we will produce by these solar panels between 11 in the morning and uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, the electricity amount that corresponds to uh, 20 nuclear power plants. That's enormous. But what is different, the nuclear power plants in the past have produced it in a very, in a very equal way. And today, it is produced only when we have sunshine, that means over day. And it is produced uh, especially in summer and not in winter. Uh, and it is changing every day, so you have to, to provide completely different um, instruments for keeping your grid and your su supply system intact. The same applies, by the way, to the windmills. We have a similar number of windmills. We have um, enormous uh, amounts of biomass electricity uh, production. And all this has been encouraged without any concrete idea of how to organize the process. It was all done by private initiative, uh, and it was done uh, uh, in, a, in a completely uh, different way. So today we have um, uh, most of the renewable energy capacities in the north. We have most of the demand in the south. That means we need uh, long distance uh, cables in order to uh, have an, um, uh, uh, sufficient capacities uh, in the grid. We will have uh, technical problems. Technical problems because the, um, the bulk of the renewable energy production always is in summer. In summer, we can easily produce, in a couple of years, uh, 50,000, uh, 60,000, 70,000 megawatt. But in summer, when everybody is uh, sitting in the garden uh, or uh, swimming in the pool, spending holidays uh, uh, in, in the Mediterranean, then we have a very low energy uh, 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 need, uh, demand, uh, and then we have an, an, a, a surplus of energy that is enormous. And it would mean that um, we cannot find uh, people uh, who would buy that, so we would uh, be faced with negative prices on the electricity exchange market. And in the winter, when people are back home from uh, Mallorca, when uh, People are no longer in their gardens and in the swimming pool, but uh, uh, producing in the factory and um, uh, sitting at home uh, watching TV. Then we have a very modest production of renewable energies because there is less sunshine, there is less wind, and there is less biomass. And even in winter, it could happen, for example, between what happened between Christmas and New Year, that we would produce uh, more electricity then we need, because everybody was on uh, a Christmas uh, holiday, leave, uh, all the um, companies were closed, uh, the public administrations, the schools were closed, and then it was warm, sunny, windy weather, and uh, we had much more electricity than we needed. But could also happen that every four or five years, perhaps every 10 years, we would um, have a situation in January Minus 15 degrees for almost one week. Brilliant sunshine, but 20 centimeters snow on the solar panels and no wind at all. And then we would have a record demand for electricity, but a very low production of renewables. That means we have not just to think about, uh, about renewable energies, we have to think about, um, um, about backup capacities. We have to think about storage of energy. We have to think about new um, uh, ways of um, uh, demand side and supply side management. And now you would probably say, well, my God, these stupid Germans, uh, how can they, how can they commit to such a project if it is terribly difficult? Well, when I was invited in Paris, uh, to explain it to the French, uh, to a committee of the French Assemblée, um, and uh, because they are interested in the transition énergétique uh, in my country, then I said, well, I consider this not as a problem. I consider it as a challenge 
ce ne sont pas des problèmes, ce sont des défis pour nous tous. Parce que nous pouvons voir qu'en Allemagne aujourd'hui, tens of thousands of engineers from energy supply companies, from grid uh, uh, companies, from universities, from uh, local and municipal uh, uh, companies are thinking and researching day and night on what they can do to solve all these problems and to solve the problems in a way that they would not lose but earn money. Uh, and how we, can, how we can use the surplus in summer uh, in a cheap way, when electricity is cheap, how we can provide more energy in winter, how we can develop storage capacity. There is a concept that is called power to gas, uh, where you can use the wind energy in summer that is um, uh, not needed uh, in order to produce gas that can be used in winter to produce uh, electricity again. It will take some years to come to um, good solutions, but one thing is for sure. I cannot see any other country where you have so many people, engineers and others, thinking about these challenges. And uh, I have no doubt at the end of the day, we will see solutions in this field. There is an issue of uh, financing. And this is important for all European countries um, in uh, financial trouble. Uh, and um, money, public money is running out uh, in most of the countries, also in Germany. We have uh, inserted in our constitution a, 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 a sovereign uh, debt uh, break, um, and that means we cannot just uh, continue like we did over the last uh, couple of 40 years. Um, and that means we have to look at the expenses for our business sector, and we have to look at the costs for private, uh, for, 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 for private people. For pensioners, for example, we had an increase in electricity prices over the last three years uh, of only 3% for energy intensive companies because we have, um, we have good ways to protect them. They are exempted from the renewable energy fee, but that means others have to pay more. And therefore, for private uh, customers, the energy price went up uh, by 20%, and for the rest of the uh, German industry, um, it went up by 25%. That is something you can support for two or for three years, but then it has to come back to a normal development. And there is another reason why it has to become cheaper uh, and uh, better at a time, because if we want to sell it as a pattern to China, uh, to India, to African countries, then it has to be affordable. It has to be cheap. We can afford, as Germany, a renewable electricity that is unaffordable for countries like Kenya, Uganda, uh, or Ivory Coast. So that means in Germany we have to develop not just the technical solutions. We have to develop also uh, what we call um, 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 uh, scale effects, what we call uh, cost decretion. And therefore I'm working very hard to reform our law on renewable energies in a way that we will have a decretion, an overall decretion of the feed-in tariffs. And I have managed, as far as solar panels are concerned last year, uh, to amend that legislation in a way that we have a automatic monthly decretion of feed-in tariffs for solar panels every month. Uh, and at the same time, uh, we have stated by the law that as soon as we will have reached more than 50,000 megawatt of solar panels in Germany, there will be no new feed-in tariffs uh, uh, anymore. And what did we see? We have seen uh, over the last couple of months, there is still a high degree of, um, of, of, of new uh, solar panels in Germany, probably 4,000 uh, megawatt this year. But it is no longer costly because it is no longer a um, uh, feed in the uh, electricity grid. It is now used for the own consumption of the owner of this panel. Because this is what I call an indirect uh, subsidy. Uh, because when you produce your own electricity on top of your roof, as a, um, a discounter of food, for example, Aldi, uh, and then in summer you have an enormous uh, uh, demand uh, for electricity, for air condition, and for your cooling and freezing uh, uh, machines, 
and then you can use the solar panels on the roof and you will produce electricity at 10 cent per kilowatt hour and instead of uh, 17 or 18 when you take it from the public grid. And for a private owner, it's even more attractive because they would have to pay 28 cents per kilowatt hour and they could produce it at 12 cents per kilowatt hour. That makes it very attractive. So you see, we have uh, a lot of problems that we have to tackle, problems that are chances. Um, we have in the first stage neglected the European dimension of energy uh, transition in Germany. From a legal point of view, as you know, in this institute, this was not... Um, this was not an infraction uh, because uh, the uh, Lisbon Treaty clearly states the energy mix uh, uh, falls under the uh, national competence of every member state. But nevertheless, we all know that uh, if we want uh, to make Europe a success, we cannot insist on legal clauses and the treaties alone. We have to have a, um, a cooperation with our neighbors and uh, our friends in Europe, and this is why. I'm now traveling around explaining what we are doing and looking for a cross-border cooperation uh, because it is my personal conviction that um, if we can organize this kind of uh, transition within the European context, it could become safer, it could become cheaper, and it would become a model for other countries worldwide. Uh, I have taken an initiative uh, and I will uh, have invited uh, ministers um, uh, to Berlin uh, for, at the beginning of June, uh, the minister from China, from India, from the UK, from uh, France to uh, establish a renewables club where we want to promote politically worldwide the idea of renewable uh, energies and uh, surely we are not alone in the universe. That is what many people in Germany think, they think we are the only country. Yes, we are the only country with such a far-going ambition. But when you look at Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia today is the country with the highest budget for renewable energies. If you look at China, they will uh, uh, bypass Germany with solar cell uh, uh, sets in China by the year 2015. If you look at Morocco, if you look at South Africa, if you look at many, many countries of India worldwide, and then you see there is a revolution um, at the beginning and uh, I hope that we all are ready when it breaks out and that we can benefit from it. Thank you so much for your attention.